Hello everybody, my name is Paul from Cryonetic. Uh, apologies for not uploading any videos in the last couple of weeks. I've been busy with other stuff, but I'm back at it. And in today's video, I'll be talking about draw calls. Now, if you've done any form of mobile development, you've heard about how you should reduce your draw calls and uh, to increase performance on any Apple or Android device or any mobile device for that matter. So today, I just want to show you guys how to just use a very basic method to decrease your draw calls. First thing I just want to show you guys before we get to that is um, if you go to your show stats here, or I'll show FPS, sorry, it will bring up your FPS counter here and on the right hand side of the screen. Now notice that from just running Unreal, it tries to run the engine as fast as what it possibly can. You can see it's topping out about 120 frames a second. I'm pretty sure it's trying to go beyond that, but I don't know if the, what, what the actual limit is. Um, I've noticed that it's um, running, uh, well, it's really stressing your graphics card out um, to, the, to the max. So in a, a way to actually just stop it from doing that, you push your key next to the number one here or the tile key you'll see the console command comes up here if you type in t max t dot max you'll see t dot max fps and then you can set that to 60 and it will run at a locked 60 frames a second you can go lower you can go 30 if you want or you can go 10 or you can even put one in if you really want but i prefer to just keep it at 60 that way it doesn't overstress your graphics card and well mine wants, mine's uh, fan is spinning like crazy at the current moment but it does eventually start cooling down if the engine runs at uh, 60 frames a second okay so let's cover draw calls it's going to play here uh, one thing to type in type in stat scene rendering you also push the console key or the tile key and if you see here the third line from the bottom says mesh draw calls now as you turn around it actually like the number changes and you don't actually know what that number is for well basically what the number is for is every time the engine calls on something in the scene so for instance this crate this crates textures and everything is basically each a draw call I think also shadows get run, rendered as a draw call uh, or static shadows. So every item I have in this level will be um, um, counted as a draw call, basically. So uh, a way just to show you guys um, what I mean is let's quickly go here. I'm going to copy this crate. Let's do it. And do it six times and then I'm going to select them and copy it another six times and then select all of them Sorry, very tedious process. And let's do it another six times. Just to pretty much emphasize my point. Okay. Now you will say lighting needs to be rebuilt for 250 items. Okay, we'll get to that later. But as you see here, I have a whole stack of them put together. Stat scene rendering. And you'll notice that the draw calls is above 500 at the current moment, or hovering between 500 and something and 400 and something. That's because it's actually taking all of these objects and drawing them individually and all the textures, materials, everything being drawn. Oh, it went as high as a thousand over there. Okay. So, let us exit out of here. Ooh, I just need to. So, I just need to quickly switch that off. There we go. So I'm just going to push control Z and I'm going to delete all of them. There we go. 
Then I'm going to go back to into Blender and here you'll see here's exactly the same crate. So what I'm going to do is same process. I'm going to copy this six times. I think I'm copying the light at the current moment as well. Yep, I'm definitely copying the light. Sorry if it's straining anyone but his eyes. So start deleting them. Just one more level. There we go. Now I'm going to take all of these, export it. Uh, let's call this create test lots. Just change my settings back here. Get a visor forward. I'm going to extract selected objects only and edge select. You'll notice that some of these settings might look a little bit different. I am on a newer version of Blender, so um, I try to keep up to date as much as possible to try and see what the new features are like in Unreal Engine 4, well, for Unreal Engine 4. Okay, I'm just going to import that into Unreal Engine 4. Let's have a look here. Just to import materials and textures, I'm going to select and that should be fine. Let's just don't want to convert the scene and import. Do, 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 do. It's going to take a little bit longer because obviously now it's a much higher detailed mesh. Well, not higher detail, just more objects in it. And let's see what it does. There we go. You see, we created a well, created a new material setup for it. But one thing you will notice now: now it's uh, collision cube is like covering the entire, or collisions covering the entire mesh. So um, this is good in a sense for. If you have large objects that might not be in use, also you'll notice now, now the lighting says only needs to rebuild lighting for one object. I'll cover a little bit on that now. But basically, if you select play now and you do the same thing, stat scene rendering, you'll see the draw calls have been reduced to under 30. The same amount of objects that was getting us a uh, Average of 400 to 500, as high as a thousand draw calls, has now been reduced to less than 30 for the entire scene. Okay, now the reason I'm just going to go out of here. The reason why this might not be a good idea is one thing is that um, the lighting model for this won't work. So if you're going to build static lights for this, it is going to look horrible. I actually think if we push build and while I'm busy talking I can just explain why it's because now it's trying to build uh, or now it's generating a light map for all these objects put together or if you want to say uh, your second UV that you have to create for light maps will now be so tightly packed that the the amount of shadowing or the, the shadows themselves would either have to be at a insanely high resolution or um, they will bleed over or just change the color of the model or something horrible um, it will just look terrible now if you 
use maybe movable lights or this is a movable object like for instance let's say that you want to make something that looks pretty cool that rotates constantly it's all like all these cubes put together then that that would be a good idea because uh, then you can um, instead of drawing each object individually you can draw this one object um, in your game and save yourself there you go you'll see overlapping UVs and let's actually see there we go now now you'll see what I mean by the horrible lighting so you can't build static lights for this um, I think if I switch it over to movable movable will work fine the lighting will be fine and also you see as soon as I switch to movable it says totally dynamic allows dynamic shadows but it's slowest for rendering now it all depends on what you want to do so if you if you want to use this use it um, obviously you would have to test out on, on your particular device what would work best but that's just a basic way to reduce draw calls um, if you guys like what you saw leave a like at the bottom I will be uploading more videos subscribe to my channel and um, if you want any of the project files uh, let me know I might just uh, start giving download links to any of the models that I'm currently creating or well uh, to this particular crate model or anything else that you guys want to see so um, once again thank you all very much for watching and then I'll see you guys in the next video alright bye bye